Hallo en welkom terug bij Farm Spice. Ons staan hier soos wat jullie kan zien op Nappe Park. Wij zijn in Gentas Boerenplaas, Koskom Bijs, wat ook hulle het noem. Uh, ons is nou bij in Gentas uh, Boerendag, inlichtingsdag geweest. En uh, ons het baie interessante praatjes geluister. Ons gaan gesels met Jack Pickering. Hij is in Gentas application specialist. Hij gaat ons vertel um, foute wat die boeren gewoonlik maak, wat hij sien in die veld. En dan vir ons die belangrijkheid van volume spuit, spoed van die spuit. En dan druppel groot, dan kom ons weer een wat sê. I said, Jack, are you well? Yeah, no, good, thank you. Good, thanks. Thank you for that uh, incredible speech. Uh, I think a lot of farmers, their eyes went big when they heard all of this information. But uh, um, if we can start uh, at what week, what is the overarching theme that you want to, to tell the farmers? So I think um, maintenance is critical and it's the easiest thing to do on the farm. Uh, I know it's a schlep, guys, but you know, Something as yeah. simple as making sure nozzles are clean, making sure filters are clean, things like that can make make or break a farming operation. You know, chemicals, we all know chemicals are flipping expensive, so it's yeah. much cheaper just to keep um, equipment maintained and nozzles um, checked. A simple way to do that is to check the flow rate of the nozzle, and the easiest way to do it is if you take the, the nozzle size times by a constant 0.4, that'll give yeah. you the flow rate at three bar, and your nozzles, you want to be within 5% of that. And that's very simple, but that helps a lot on the farm and will save a lot of money. If you don't do maintenance, you showed now there uh, in your demonstration uh, the uh, nozzles that works properly, nozzle that doesn't work properly. In your experience, what are some of the bigger problems that can arise with incorrect application? Uh, so, I mean, the simple one is ineffective product use. So yeah. you land up, it just doesn't work. And... Um, you know, you, you spend a lot of money, so you've spent the money on the product, but it just doesn't work, and that's simply bad. It can be bad application. Yeah. Another one is just wasted wasted money. So if you're looking at a rate-controlled machine and you're looking across the section, if a nozzle is overproducing, it's got to get that extra from somewhere. Yeah. It's most likely going to steal it from a smikey, which then means that your percentage is out. So one nozzle will be underproducing, one will overproduce, and the rate controller will still tell you that everything's fine because that's the rate controller's job that averages everything averages out. Averages everything out, uh, but the, it is not fine. That's exactly, a, that's it's not theory. fine. And you know, we've done we've done quite a lot. I, I can give you a real world example where yeah. we did. Um, I did a calibration for a grower, and nozzles were incorrect. Grower then said to me, "But the rate controller showed me everything's right." As I mentioned, that's the rate controller's job. Yeah. Um, if you actually worked out the wastage money, so over the pers over the flow that was yeah. needed, we worked out to 105 rand, if I remember correctly, per hectare yes. on a 1,200 rand yeah. program. <laughs> you know, it's a, a lot, lot of money. It's a lot yeah. of money. A thousand hectares, that's 100 grand. Yeah. You know, for something that could easily be rectified. But through by proper maintenance. Uh, let me ask you like this. The maintenance is done now. You had three, let's say... Um, about after. themes that you discussed. You discussed the drop size, you discussed the speed, and you discussed the volume. Can yeah. you please just take us through uh, each of those sure. and just... So yeah, let's start with droplets. Important. Droplets yeah. is always a good starting point. So a key message from me is uh, what I like to call the one to eight rule. And what I mean by that is droplets are measured in their diameter, not their volume. So okay, yeah. a 200 micron droplet, if you double its size, you actually eight times its volume. So said in another way, Eight 200 droplets will fit into one 400 micron okay, droplet. Okay, I see, yeah. So eight to one. And why that's important is because you can manipulate with water volume coverage. So you don't have to go to a very fine droplet. And why it's important is fine droplets are super susceptible to drift, at both physical drift and evaporational. And being in South Africa, it's not like this is the wettest country, country in the in world. Country in the world, no, yeah. So there's a lot of, prob probably a lot of um, evaporational drift happening. Um, and that will lead to a, a, a lot of problems as well. Yeah, so I mean, in the last trial I did where we compared 200 at a medium-sized droplet versus 100 liters of medium-sized droplet, Delta T was at 15, very dry conditions, 13% relative humidity and 31.5 degrees temperature. Yeah. We lost 48% of the product, actual calculated product, just from evaporation. Just from evaporation, yeah. And if we can go on to speed, now if I understood you correctly, the speed and the height of yes. the of the, 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 the what do you call sprayer is is is, yeah. is correlated yeah i always like to say speed's not your friend we all have yeah. that inner schumacher in us and we want to go <laughs> fast but the reality is 
The faster you go, the more turbulence you create on the boom, which then makes the droplets don't not settle evenly. So that's the first problem. Generally, what happens if you're going faster? We all know how expensive nozzles yeah. are and booms are. So guys that go faster tend to have higher boom heights. If you raise your boom, if you go from half a meter to a meter, that's a 10 times increase in driftability. Yeah. Irrelevant of what nozzle you've got on there. So yes, nozzles can help you avoid drift but a very simple on the farm solution is just to slow down and make sure that that boom height is constant and also get stable. more product on the yeah, floor as well 100 percent. you know you want to get the product settling as quick as possible on the floor and the best way to do that is to minimize the height yeah. as much as possible and the last one if i want to see is the volume that you put down yes so in south africa i want to be very clear i'm not saying 100 liter or low water volume applications won't work but what we need to remember is that they're very risky. And the reason they're risky is the lower the water volume, the smaller the droplet to compensate for the coverage. And the more susceptible you are to drift with those smaller droplets. And because of the physical amount of water, if you're comparing 100 versus 200, it's like spraying a road. If you spray double the amount on the road, it's obviously going to take longer to evaporate. And it's the same with spraying. You know, if you if you spray low water volumes it will evaporate quicker than at higher water volumes but there's a relationship and that comes yeah. through experience and uh, you guys have that experience and you guys can uh, advise the farmers accordingly definitely you know i think um, as i said today like for me for modern spraying if you're looking at 100 liters plus there's no new, no reason in my mind with the current droplet spectrum that's all changed but with the current droplet spectrum um, you're looking at very coarse and if you're going up to 200 liters you can go all the way up to extra coarse or ultra coarse especially for herbicides yeah. and then for your fungicides and insecticides sort of where you need retention very coarse to coarse would be the recommended sort of droplet size i thank you very much for your time uh, where can we get a hold of you to get more information or to get some advice from you guys uh, so if you can go on to, you can go onto the Syngenta website my yeah. email address and everything is on the Syngenta website well, you can just tell us you can tell us uh, now as well what is your email address my email address is uh, jack.pickering at syngenta.com fantastic and they can get in contact with you thank, thank you for you. your time and enjoy the pleasure. rest of the day absolute pleasure cheers Zach that's it it is uh, Jack you saw by uh, van Syngenta of Heisala application specialist as it has said um, the three are unbelievably important but maintenance people maintenance is unbelievably important as it has said you have more money you have good money en jy gaan op die einde van die dag minder product op die grond kry, wat slecht is vir jou ook. Dit is wel spuis wat hy gesê het, um, ga naar die Syngenta webtuisie toe en stuur vir my e-mail, hy is vriendelijk, hy kan jou mooi help en kan vir jou advies gee, waar nodig. Dit is wel spuis, tot volgende keer.